Howdy folks, this is Retsu Talk episode 35, and it's me, and it's Beef, and we're here, and we're gonna dish. I thought you would have went with debrief so we could have had the rhyme, but well, hey, whatever. No, that's cool. That's fine. Um, <laughs> can I start with um, something a little unrelated to what we plan to discuss? Yeah. A little bit of an apology redaction type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, last week with Low Tax, we were talking about big name Let's Players he hates, and um, PewDiePie came up as uh, did Markiplier Games. I incorrectly threw Scene Anners onto that pile. A um, couple people pointed out, totally the wrong guy. I really fucked that up. I was thinking of somebody else, not him. My bad, Scene Anners, you know. Uh, you know, so if you want to go check out for yourself what you think of him, you know, because there he is. There you go. Um, and now finally the dust can settle. <laughs> over this big time. No, the I... war clouds can drop, <laughs> finally. No, a couple people pointed it out, and then when I looked, I was like, ah, oh, shit, that's not him. I forget who I was thinking of, but whatever. That's... Form your own opinion. Absolutely. And then and then watch Red to pray anyway. We're desperate now. Um, so yeah, then now we can get to our agenda proper, of which we only have two things, really. That's right. So last week with Lotex, we got into Harvester a little mm-hmm. bit. A Granted, little. There was a bit of a fart situation happening in the background. I don't feel like we gave it the uh, proper attention. I'm sorry about that, by the way. I just, I was holding it in the whole hour. Yeah, I mean, how much was it coffee and beans that you had all day? It was actually methane that I was ingesting through my stomach. Oh. Directly is the thing. See, that's just a weird thing to do. <laughs> I, If you say so, but I mean, I, I've already... I don't know the crazy new diet fads going on. I've already lost 10 pounds on this, so... <sighs> yeah, but then just 10 more pounds of diarrhea build up. So it's, it's just, it's kind of a cycle. That doesn't... I think it was all in there to begin with is the thing. You have that much stored up in your butthole to begin with? You know, well, I eat a lot of beans and and coffee. Beans. I eat coffee beans. Is the coffee thing. beans, right. Right, which, which has... You don't like even process thing. them into coffee. Yeah. Just, yeah, and then you take the methane. Why are we discussing this? We're going on a harvester. Well, that that's what happened in harvester, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, more or less. So That's what I remember from it. All right, so this is the spoiler fall harvester talk yeah. first. <laughs> so if you haven't played it yet, <laughs> we highly encourage you to go do that. Do we, though? No. Uh, yeah, Harvester... Well, it's tricky with adventure games, right? Because there's usually not very much to speak of in terms of actual like gameplay, you know? Sure. Like, in general, it, it, especially old-school adventure games, it's they can be tough to recommend. They're usually live or die by their story, you know, and the puzzles they're in. And Harvester has pretty crappy puzzles, really, you know? Yeah, crappy puzzles, and it does have... Gameplay, sort of, but it's all latched onto the end of the game. Well, there is combat, but it's very a very simple combat engine. You click on enemies to attack them. You equip, unequip items. Uh, there's healing items. I mean, it's pretty much everyone agrees too. It's the worst part of Harvester is the combat. Yeah. How does the health work? As far as Steve. Like, does it regenerating after each encounter if he gets hit a couple times? No. Um, you know the photograph of him in the inventory where he's, like, smiling like an idiot? Oh, so he looks more and more distressed as he gets hurt? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He, his mm-hmm. photograph degenerates, you know. And um, you you pick up items through the game, like food items. A lot of them were in the pot stamps medicine cabinet, in the lodge kitchen. There were some sandwiches, things like that. Lots of meat, yeah. Yeah, and that'll that's what'll restore Steve's health. Okay. Um, so that said, Harvester pretty much lives or dies by its story, to, for an odd choice of terminology there, but still, you know. Which I guess you could say it has. It does seem to have one. Um, it is trying to make a point. I think its big appeal is that it's very violent, obviously, and it has a very unique setup. I can't think of anything I could compare it to. I mean... Maybe kind of, uh, like, Deadly Premonition? Where there's this big mystery surrounding everything that you don't find out about it, till it's, the end? It's funny you say that, because I was thinking about games like Killer7 and Deadly Premonition. Oh. Um, I think the big difference is, in those two games, it's very abstract, it's very hard to know what exactly is going on, which is part of the mystery, but they're abstract where you don't get a clear answer, you know? Yeah. 
Like, Deadly Premonition has a clearer answer of the two. Killer7, I mean, I would struggle to even describe the protagonist, much less the overarching game. Deadly Premonition, there's still a bunch of questions that never really get resolved or are open to interpretation, like, is the combat actually happening, or is it just all in York's head, or... Is it a simulation? Right, or... Yeah, you have no idea what's going on, really. Whereas at least Harvester... Uh, says, this is what's going on, period, concretely. Yeah. But I said this last time, the answer comes so quickly. Like, I think in a better game, it would have given the player some time to digest, maybe have the character deal with it in some capacity. Mm -hmm. But here's just, oh, here's the twist, and oh, credits. <laughs> There's one clue I actually attempted to sort of call out when we were doing The Wrong Prey, which is there is Gian Memorial School. Which, yeah. the name, you know, Ed Gein, the serial killer. Mm. That's, but that's about the only one I could really identify, so there might be little tiny things like that in there, but I still don't think you could ever derive, oh, I'm in VR, trained to make me a serial killer, from that, you know? So yeah, it, it comes at you suddenly. I think The Lodge is really where the game kind of goes off the rails. Yeah. Because before that, I mean, before that, it's intriguing. I don't know, have a chess piece come to life. <laughs> Hit himself in the head with an axe, who cares? I do love the chess master, though, I will it, say that. That was the highlight of the game for me. <laughs> yeah, same. It could have ended there, I would have been happy. <laughs> I mean, the town has a relatively good progression of things getting worse and worse. You know, the baby's eyes don't pop out till toward the end, although it's eating bugs early on. Yeah, the weirdness slowly escalates. I'll right. give it that, yeah. Yeah, I think... If I had to put a fine point on it, I feel like they had a lot of time to write and try to flush out the town. When it came to the lodge, yeah. not at all. That everything is disjointed. It's kind of like a mishmash, really. So do you think that's why the combat was so heavy at that point? Yeah, because that's too, if you, that's too, if you look at the puzzles you have to solve in the lodge, I mean, there's a pipe puzzle with uh, the boilers, there's plates you put onto, or boards you put onto lava, but then it's all just kill everything, you know, besides that. Even the chess puzzle, which is a puzzle proper, is totally optional, and you can just kill the guy. You and know? it ends with having to kill a giant chess piece. Yeah, right, exactly. And that's the thing, Steve is a weird character, because he starts as a, an alright sort of fish-out-of-water character that you, the player, can sort of, um, I guess, put yourself into, meaning he you know, has amnesia, he doesn't know what's going on in the town, he feels like he's you know, he doesn't understand why the TVs are in black and white and things like that. Uh, and then you have Stephanie, who's in a similar boat, but is grounded for most of the game. Or so captive. are we supposed to believe that Steve originally came from a more modern setting and he got kind of oddly warped to, like, 50s suburbia America? That's it. If you um, talk to the little brother at the beginning of the game, and it was in the long play, too, he mentions that, you know, he thinks it's odd that they have a black and white TV and there's color ones. And the little brother's right. like, color TVs? Like, that's ridiculous. And... But when Steve tries to remember it, he has trouble. So I guess some part of the VR is blocking him from full access to who he is and things like that, or where he comes from. So he's sort of just thrown in there is the idea. So you, the player, are supposed to feel, I guess, like Steve. Um, what fucks that up a bit is the little optional thing where you can kill someone in the town. Yeah. Because then Steve never reacts to that. You know, he yeah, it takes away from the whole they're trying to test Steve thing. If he just before he's even aware right. of the task he has to do, he just oh, I'll just kill this guy. Well, I guess that's a tricky thing with games that attempt to be non-linear like that and tell a story because then it doesn't jive anymore. You know, like Steve's whole thing where uh, you know he's like, "What's going on here?" It's like if you if you killed the paper boy, I mean, you're pretty much now invested. And in, yeah, Power Harvester's fucked up. I'm in a consequence-free environment. Whatever, you know. The first sandbox game. <laughs> GTA, you're welcome. <laughs> I see where Rockstar got their ideas. I see where all video games got their ideas. Mm -hmm. Harvester, I think, though, was delayed for four years. They had a lot of budget problems with it. And it ended up making, I think I mentioned this already, ended up making, like, none of its money back. Yeah, it was like an immediate failure, pretty much, right? Yeah, it, it couldn't sell in any of the big, like, retail stores, obviously, because it was so violent, and... 96, I think, was about when adventure games were in kind of their dark ages, you know? Starting to decline. Yeah, kind of like the whole, 
old man Murray writes about like the whole like death of adventure games where like you have like your Gabriel Knight three where the story is just completely dropped and the puzzles are completely obtuse and crazy. And, you know, I guess we're kind of seeing that come out of that now where you have telltale games, obviously the big one and various Kickstarters to continue these old adventure games. Yeah. You know, which is sort of recent, but I, I, Harvester was definitely in that sort of, it seemed like people didn't like adventure games and, it didn't have a ton to offer besides being over the top. No, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I, I'm trying to identify what the big selling point of Harvester is. Like, I'm just like, I don't know, imagine a commercial for the game. Like, what do you show that would make people be like, oh, yeah, that looks fun. It's funny because I was considering making a, like a short video on what Harvester is. Because before one of the podcasts with our guests, we were talking about Harvester. And I was having trouble describing what the selling point was. <laughs> The best thing I can really give it is in the first half, or really the first two thirds of the game, I'd say the the town section is probably the most interesting part because everything is off. All these people in the town seem to buy into this horrific kind of thing. Everything is over sexualized. Everything is very violent. Yeah, you there's know. this clear veneer of mystery that the player would presume would be solved. Right. And so that would you know ideally draw them in, make them want to figure it out. And it's it's good at dark humor in a way, insofar as you'll laugh at some of the stuff going on, but you'll also be kind of stunned by what's going on. Y you know, I mean, the whole Stephanie's spine scene, which is my favorite, probably yeah. in the game, with the sheriff eating pie and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it it's just very... Well, that's a little... That's, that's maybe a bad example, because that's very over the top. And that one, you can tell they're selling for comedy sake, you know? Yeah. But you have Edna hanging herself and her suicide note, and then the sheriff's crying while he's eating pie, or Loomis masturbating in the cell, but then being whipped like a dog and howling. And you kind of have this notion of, this is supposed to be funny, but I don't know what the fuck is really going on How am here. I supposed to feel about all of this? Right, yeah. yeah. And I, th I think it succeeds insofar as that it's unsettling in some regard there. But... Yeah, I can see what people meant when... We had talked about long play, uh, wrong playing this for a while, but I think maybe you and some other people were like, well, you know, Harvester is kind of intentionally mm -hmm. weird, so it's harder to make fun of in that way. But so it turns out the reason that Harvester was made or the theme they were going for was a reaction to kind of the anti video games violence stuff that was happening at the time. That's I guess, right. Congress in the early 90s. That's right. Yeah. Because it was, yeah. I think development was in 91, 92, which was about the time that. Mm -hmm. Orrin Hatch, Joe Lieberman were crusading against Mortal Kombat. Right. You know, uh, so then that's sort of the big question ultimately is, what is the statement it's trying to make if that's there is exactly one? That's exactly it. Yeah, the message is so, it's buried in all this weirdness. It's kind of hard to say, what are they trying to express exactly? Yeah, that's the part I have trouble with. Um, a couple people have mentioned to me on Twitter and Ask FM, they think it might be a big troll thing. Or that it's trying to purport that if video ga video games being like this or turning people into killers or whatever is just patently ridiculous and therefore Harvester is ridiculous mm -hmm. to that extent. Maybe. It's an odd way of going about it, though. I mean, it's certainly it wasn't a cheap game to make for such a such a, a statement yeah, like I, that. I imagine they wanted to make a commercially viable game. So if you're going in and like, let's troll the government. <laughs> no, no one's going to buy that. I'm wondering if it was more like violent video games are sort of in right now. And let's make that statement, but we'll also cash in by making a really good Let's gore take game. it to the real extreme. Yeah, that's the thing. Let's go as far as we can with the, by pushing the envelope. Mm hmm. And I think with a few exceptions, uh, Harvester might be a violent game or a gory one, but it's not ever hard to watch, you know? With the exception of when the kids are cannibalizing their mom. That, did you, that scene bothered the fuck out of me. I still have trouble watching that for some I was reason. able to watch it. I was just kind of befuddled by it more than anything else. You know what it is? I don't know exactly what it is, but when there's a scene where they close in on one kid but taking a bite out of her leg... That really gets to me somehow. Because hmm. when they all stand up and they're, oh, mommy, you're so good, like in succession, which is really just kind of, I have to say that is a little horrific, disturbing, you know. Kind of like the Shining Twins? I guess, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know, when they close in on the one 
kid peeling off part of his mom with his teeth. That, like, ew, that just kind of got to me for some reason. But that said... It's that's probably because the same thing happened to you. Right, but then I don't really know what exactly they were going for there in terms of the overarching story. Because, <laughs> you know... I, uh, Imagine well, that storyboard meeting. Well, a lot of the lodge, none of the rooms... The third floor seems to be the most thematic one in terms of they're trying to teach him things in a way. Like you have the room of the mystery of pain where they're whipping the guy on the table and you have the room of the mystery of mercy where you can kill the old people and things like that. But I don't, even knowing the ending, like watching it back, I can't understand what that has to do with them trying to teach Steve to be a serial killer or, you know, right. Like, the town I could kind of... The town I had a theory that maybe what it was is they're trying to put Steve into this mindset and this worldview that people are really like this under the surface, that everyone's all into just sex and uh, and violence anyway, and you're kind of doing your... If you were going to kill them, you'd be doing your part to cleanse things. You know, like maybe there was something there to influence him to be a killer, but then... I don't know. That doesn't seem quite right. And then the lodge seems to just toss that out the window and here's just a bunch of shit. That's that's my thing. I, I just I don't understand exactly what they were going for. You know, they were going for something. They had a few ideas that you could see here and they're like, I guess they were trying to make some kind of satirical statement with the whole cowboy show. Right. That was on television, maybe. But then everything just kind of gets lost in the shock value that they seem to be going for. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah. It seems like they had they had ideas for where they wanted to go, but it kind of yeah, it gets lost in the whole well, we want the baby's eyes to pop out even though that yeah. doesn't really add to anything. Or like another theory someone put in is that Steve before the VR was afraid of wasps and the sergeant at arms, you know, the guy with the voice you can do, um mentions that that's the best way they can get the simulation, but the victim's subconscious modifies it somehow. So one theory is that Steve in real life is afraid of wasps, and that's why there's a wasp woman and it affects the baby. <laughs> it, except that's just like a weird ancillary thing. Yeah, yeah. the wasp woman, you talk to her once and never again. Right. Uh, one of the extras you'll see, uh, if you kill her, she's actually, her lower half is a wasp body, <laughs> you know? Well, of course. Right. But again, I, I don't really know what that has and to do with And then after that, me. Steve is like, something's off about this town. <laughs> Well, that's the other ridiculous thing, too, when the, star the sergeant of arms says to him at the end, like, every uh, if I can't do it. Everything everything in Harvester is slightly askew. Because I even made the joke, like, slightly? Like, it's, it's <laughs> fucked up. Like, it's crazy. Askew's not even the word. It's bent and mangled out of shape. Hey, keep Harvest weird. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I guess so. Who is your favorite character? Favorite character... Favorite character. That's a, that's a toughie. It's hard to say favorite when, you know, some of them are goofy and funny at times, like Mr. Potsdam, but then mm -hmm. it's offset by how some of the weird shit that he's into. <laughs> that's, you know, what's interesting is the thread back when Vlafford did the Let's Play of it, I think felt similarly. Mr. Potsdam was immediately the go-to character where he's hysterical with the meat stuff. And then yeah. when he gets into his dark shit, you're like, oh, yeah. I don't. No, if I like him anymore. Oh, you know what was weird? Somebody pointed out, by the way, if you watch the scene in the lodge with Mr. Potsdam, I never noticed this. He's not wearing pants. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, if you look, like something's digitally painted on or something. They added pants after the fact. Like I don't know what the hell he was wearing then in the original filming. <laughs> but there you go. There you go. I do like bug-eyed uh, penis dude. Oh, yeah. He's um, pretty funny. Mr. Johnson. That, Mr. Was, Johnson. Aptly named Mr. Johnson, yeah. Yeah, I was going to bring him up because I, 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 I loved his voice actor. I loved his little images. He's just there in the beginning. I don't think he's there for any particular reason. <laughs> just to get his car scratched. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this that like, needs a good hard penis. <laughs> it's just awesome. I don't know why. I like, I like Mr. Johnson the best, I think. Are the dialogue trees supposed to make any lick of sense? Because just watching, are you supposed to intuitively know when to say different things? Because it seems like the right solutions for talking to people just require ridiculous trial and error. I don't think they matter at all. I mean, 
none, none of them really seem to affect the story. I think you can talk your way out of a couple things in the lodge, but mm. for the most part, I mean, it's usually just... Um, just like window dressing, it has to be in an adventure game kind of thing? Basically, yeah. Because, mm. again, it doesn't matter how you play Steve, because if something horrible happens, you can just say, like, I don't believe that, that's terrible, or like, yeah, pretty cool, huh? Or spend a night in jail and then you're fine. Right, exactly. So... One night for killing a dude. <laughs> That's all you need, really. So Steve, I know, yeah, Steve himself is kind of a a nothing protagonist. Yeah, just kind of an avatar for the player, I guess. I guess so. It's just that the, the fucked up things you can make him do that should warp or change the ca- player character don't, so they create kind of a disconnect. Mm-hmm. Like like um, Darkseed, the first one. Like Mike Dawson's supposed to be a player character because he's he's kind of just blah. He's a guy who bought a new house. Much unlike yeah. the second game. Uh, but um, And in Dark Side 2, they think anyone playing the game is just a loser. <laughs> I, I see you had a little Freudian slip as to the topic we want to move on to. But yeah, Dark Seed, <laughs> Dark Seed 2, yeah. Um, Dark Seed 2, he's kind of a loser. Um, no, but Dark, Dark Seed 1, he's, he's just a nobody. He's just a guy who has a house. And the idea is you're supposed to be able to jump into him because of that, you know. Right, right. You can put your personality onto him. Sort of Steve is attempting to be that, but kind of fails because just of like I would have obviously ripped Stephanie's spine out, Mortal Kombat style, towards the end of the game. Absolutely, that's what I would do. So yeah, yeah, totally. Harvest knows me. Harvester <laughs> knows me. So, um, final thoughts. Um, interesting premise. Kind of had me going for the ride, but disappointed at the end of the ride. Yeah, I don't know that they could have done a whole lot better per se yeah you know it is what it is kind of it was an experiment that failed pretty bad i think it would have been worse had they not given you any sort of concrete answer and they had just been sort of abstract because then oh yeah 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 i i know I, I don't fall in for things like that in general but there especially i feel like they're really building up to you really want an answer granted you get one it's kind of meh but you got one yeah right all right, shall we? Let's transition. Speaking of Dark Seed. <laughs> uh, so let's debrief on, on Dark Side. Why don't film. you fill me in? Okay. Uh, let's see. There's a relatively popular Let's Player known as um, Dark Side Phil. Who, DSP uh, Gaming. DSP Gaming. Um, he, you, you can, he's on Twitter and Twitch as um, you can call me. DSP, I think. Or no, they call me DSP. That's it. Uh, And they do. And some people do, absolutely. So, uh, a while back, uh, Chip and I had done a video of his where he plays Metal Gear Solid 2. And it's a very odd video because one thing that's weird about Phil is his Let's Plays are camcorder LPs. And I'll give him a bit of credit. They're probably some of the best camcorder LPs in terms of technical meaning. He does center the camera. Uh, like if you were to watch it, you would say, is that a camcorder? I think it is. But rather than just immediately like, oh, that camcorder. Not not quite that good. <laughs> okay. But, but getting there. Because we remember okay. we saw that one the one time that we weren't sure if it was a camcorder LP. Uh-huh, yeah. And turned out was, you know it's a, it's, you know it's a camcorder, but I guess if you were going to do a camcorder Let's Play, that's about the upper tier you can get with it. But what's weird is Phil makes money. He does this for a living. So he could have afforded a capture card for direct capture a long time ago, but just refused to do it. Right. On the grounds that... Well, he has a whole video on why he refused to do it. Oh, he does. Of course he does. Yes, of course he does. And it's uh, it's more or less he has no good excuse. And what's really fucked up is he, in the same thing where he's recording his camera setup, he shows his computer and he has like a serious like rig, you know? Mm-hmm. So you have to think like this is not a, ch- a case where he's can't afford like a, a cheapo capture device because even like an RGB cable one it runs you like less than a hundred nowadays, you know. So what you're dancing around is that he's just lazy. No, yeah, I mean yes, yes, mm-hmm. uh, but that's not all. Okay. <laughs> um, this is getting more complicated than Harvester. I I know. Tell me about it. Um, okay, so he's. He's actually extremely stubborn, is mm. the idea. Let's go into the video before we, we, we dissect Phil, right? So, video you, you put together? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, so it, um, I watched more of his stuff because he complained a lot on Twitter about Chip and my video, which is titled "Colonel, I didn't imagine, uh, didn't manage to avoid drowning." It's not on Red Supre. It's yeah. one of Chip Cheesem's videos. Because when I do videos with Chip, sometimes like we'll take two and he'll take two kind of thing, you know. Right. Yeah. So he got that one. Uh, and back then I didn't. I I knew of Dark Side Phil, but you know I I wasn't like. Oh, I got to hit Dark Side Phil. It was just like, hey, look at this video I found. That's ridiculous, you know. But he goes into how he started going into how like, oh, copyright law, and I'm gonna have their video taken down and shit, you know. It was one of those guys. Yeah, one of those like, oh my lord, just yeah. knock it off, dude, kind of thing. So I started watching more of his stuff, and I realized he has kind of this weird anti fan base. It seems like. See, this was what I wanted to bring up. Yeah, because I. Like comparing, say PewDiePie mm -hmm. to Dark Side Phil. Mm -hmm. PewDiePie, he's got lots of subscribers, and you can, you can rationalize why to some degree. Like, oh, his humor appeals to kids. They screamy stuff that they laugh at. Right. Yeah. You know, so people, some people get drawn to that. Whatever. Dark Side Phil. <laughs> it's it's like you have to really really try to like his videos. Here's the big difference between him and PewDiePie. PewDiePie is good at PR, right? I won't get into it, but like... Uh, He's he, kind of happy, interactive with his audience. And he always tries to speak to them positively, even though, well, whatever. Fisting the screen or whatever it is he does. Or, or yeah, or telling them how yeah. proud he is of them for getting him a million <laughs> subscribers. I can't believe people And you know, good for but them. I, okay, yeah, good for good them. Job. Sure. Yeah, no. And and then he should be proud of them. That was their job, I guess. Yeah. Uh whatever. Fine. But no, I mean and he does do the charity stuff. You know, he he's very good at keeping his image up. Phil is exactly the opposite and <laughs> pretty much shoots himself on the in the foot on every turn, at every turn. So he got popular because he would do these games and he would yell at them and things like that. And before the Metal Gears, even, he would, uh, you know, he'd play Street Fighter, he'd do all this stuff, and, you know, he got his fan base, because people will be fans of a lot of things on YouTube, whatever, right? So are you saying people were attracted to the video because they wanted to see him fuck up and do badly because he's so inherently unlikable? No, I think what happens is it starts out that way, in a way, like, you, you like to see a guy yelling at the game and failing at it, and... Then you want to see the train wreck over and over again? Well... <sighs> See, here's the issue. So with Metal yeah. Gear and Dark Souls, whenever you have an entire video series where you're just kind of bashing the game, a lot of the game's fans are going to come out against you, which, you know, whatever. Makes sense. Right, but the problem is that he's really bash I, bashing the game for things that are very clearly his fault. See, I'm, sometimes I wonder, is that an act he's trying to put on because he knows it gets response, or is he really that... Dense. I'm going with the latter. I okay. do not. I do. After having watched more of his stuff, I am firmly he is not an act. And part of the reason is because, and this is where I think his big fuck ups come in. Because he wears a cowboy hat. <laughs> well, it's oh god, there's that too. <laughs> um, there's one thing though. It's one thing when you make fun of a video game like that because to people, video games are some kind of corporate entity thing. You know, it's not a big deal. It's whatever. But he has these videos where he plays Street Fighter 4 online, and he whines at the other person playing against him, which just makes him look like a huge douchebag. And it's some tin foil level shit too, right? Because he's thinking, oh, this guy's watching my stream, seeing who I'm picking and counter picking that. That was the most ridiculous thing I'd seen, was yeah. he, has, he was playing, he picked, um, I don't play a lot of Street Fighter 4, Hawken, the Turkish oil guy, and somebody picked Guile, and he's like, Bullshit, he's watching the stream. Counterpick, dude. Counterpick. So then when the guy wins the match, the whole time, of course, the guy never really won the match. He just counterpicked him. But it happens constantly. Like, if you watch his videos, where it's always the controller's fault or network lag's fault or something. Or the game didn't tell me to do this when it did. And I, th I have to think, even if you're a fan of his, like, yell at the game kind of thing, you have to get a little sick of that. Because... Especially too, because now he's just being a, d a douche to other people. It's like it's it's poor sportsmanship taken to this extreme level, and it it comes from in 2010 he placed or won a Street Fighter tournament, and uh, so that's what got him on the map in the first place. 
Well, yeah, part. Well, he was doing videos since 2008, and I think this happened in 2010. And what's funny is uh, there's some videos where, like, this one guy, I think Mike Watson and Justin Wong and uh, are, are on camera talking about that year. And Justin Wong's kind of nice about it and wants to just sort of avoiding the issue. <laughs> and this other guy, Watson's like, no, no, Darkseid Phil's a total douchebag. <laughs> he goes, what happened is somebody brought in a PlayStation version of Street Fighter where if you're playing at a tournament level, and this is going by Watson, so maybe grain of salt if you like, um, but uh, you said, like, you know, Bison's, um, what's the torpedo move? You know, you charge back, forward, Psycho yeah, Torpedo or whatever. About. Yeah, Psycho Crusher? Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Um, only went, like, 20% of the way across the screen where it's, as the Fierce is supposed to go the full way. He's like, there are things like that that really fucked it up. So Phil ends up winning because he was, like, the only person who'd really played that version. And then, apparently, Phil started advertising himself as, like, the world's or America's best Super Turbo player. And, like, really talking up how good he was at Street Fighter. But then, like, he has these streams where he loses all these matches. And then, I guess, to justify what he thought of his Street Fighter skill level, blames everything else, and ends up just coming off like an, an asshole. There's another video where he's in a, he got disqualified for a Street Fighter tournament. Oh. Because he wouldn't stop filming. Because <laughs> he's like has his like phone out, I guess, and he's filming shit. At what point, then, the guy doing the color commentary and the announcing of the tournament says to him, like, Dark Side Phil, no one cares. You're holding up the tournament. Stop recording. <laughs> and then another guy who I guess is one of the officiants of the tournament goes, no, forget it. You're disqualified right after it. And then Phil starts screaming about, like, he's like, this is bullshit. You want me to run your fucking tournament for you? And stuff. And, uh, <laughs> so, oh, God, the, 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 the rabbit hole sinks deep. Do you, you hear the whole controversy with the computer someone built for him? No. Oh, I'm, oh, God, I'm forgetting the name now. It's like, F Mike, F no, Futova Productions. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick while I'm talking about it. His fans, right, offer to build him a computer. Why? Because, you know, he has fans. And, uh, they're tell everyone was basically telling him, go to direct capture, go to direct capture, go to direct capture, you know? And he wouldn't. So one of his fans actually offers, he's like, listen, I have a, and he, this fan, this guy now has this whole video. Um, he's like, uh, I'm working as an internship and doing computer repair. Uh, if you, if you pay me, pay us like $1,200, which is not a lot, you know, it's, we're, we're not making profit off this. We'll build you a gaming rig that you can use to record your videos and use direct capture, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, what happens is, apparently Phil gets it. Um, at one point, they did ask for an extra $100 to upgrade the video card. Phil gets it and starts telling people that the computer that people, people built for him is a fucking lemon. It doesn't work. And he paid $3,000 of it. And he should have just gotten it cheaper. He's like, totally. That's what he says. Mm -hmm. He totally shits on the, these fans that made him a computer, right? And also increases the money he spent from like twelve hundred to three thousand, and the guy I can't find his fucking name. Uh, well, anyway, I'll, I'll look for it in the background here. The guy uh, who built it for him shows you the PayPal transaction. He's like, the three thousand dollars thing is total bullshit. That is a lie. Someone built, you know, somebody that he said it, it was not that at all. You know, so it's like you wonder. Like, who is, like, it, it's just such a douchebag move that your fans did this for you, because even if you thought it was a lemon, or it didn't work, like, you take that kind of shit offline, you know? Like, yeah. you don't have to, like, go out and tell the public, like, wow, my fans tried to do something nice for me, but they fucking sucked at it, go to hell, you know? I need everybody to have my back. Right. And according to this guy, it's Futoba something, I, I just having trouble finding it. It's, uh, Chris and, um, this other guy, Ty, I think, who also made his website. His website? Yeah. Yeah, because again, he wouldn't, he couldn't make, he didn't make a website for himself, so his fans offered to do it for him, and uh, he kind of shit on that too, apparently, and totally stopped giving this guy Chris um, uh, credit for it, you know, saying like, well, Ty built the website, Chris is like, that's not true, we spent it 50-50, so, and apparently, according to this guy Chris too, the computer wasn't a lemon at all, he's like, what, he goes, there was one mistake we made with the RAM, where we, we installed 12 gigs of doubleheader RAM, he goes, that, I'll admit, was a mistake, but everything else he said, he said things were scratched on it, which, by the way, shouldn't fucking matter. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it didn't work. He goes, that was all untrue. It all worked, you know, all this stuff. But 
he keeps digging himself a hole, it seems like, despite b- being more and more of an asshole, which is why I think he has this kind of weird, and I don't know another way to put it, but pathetic sort of attempt at retribution with this DS positive hashtag. <laughs> Which his notion is now, because there's a lot of, like, anti-Dark Side Phil videos coming out of the way he acts at tournaments, the way he plays video games, things like that. And now he's like, well, now I'm not going to mention the haters, and I'm just going to respond with the DSP, the DS positive hashtag. Which is, like, wow. That'll show him. Who the hell told him to... Because, <laughs> alright, say what you will about internet people and Let's Play fans and all that. But it's a little hard to social media market people when you're very transparent about it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, the whole geek culture. Like, so, just say, like, if you see, like, Kraft goes, like, hey, if you eat Kraft American cheese, why don't you use the hashtag, I like cheese? And, like, I think most people in that kind of, uh, in that audience segment are like, no? Like, why the fuck would I do that? You know what I mean? Or because, use the hashtag for different disgusting yeah, things? Yeah, exactly. Or turn it around on them and stuff. And I think that's... I think I don't know if someone either got a little through to Phil and was like, "Look, you you really have people are think you're a douchebag right now, and you got to do something to stem that." So, you know, why don't you try this DS positive thing, which is so fucking ridiculous. That was the big idea. That was the big idea. I think. Here's what you have to do that will require the least amount of effort. <laughs> Can you do this without being a dick about it? <laughs> and then I um, I ended up watching his um. He has a he has a, a lot of live stream stuff, and he has a one called. And I wish I were making this up. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the king. Well, thank you for your question very much. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so people submit him questions as as their king, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's the self anointed king of hate, right? Yes. After he won the Street Fighter tournament, apparently he <laughs> called himself the king of hate. I am not making that up. <laughs> so. The king of hate, he answers your questions. Um, the first thing I'd like to point out, which is my favorite part, is it his stream happened the same day we released A Day in the Life of Dark Side Phil. Yeah. And he's like, I'm not even going to address it or talk about it or these haters. I know a video went up today. And then he proceeds to talk about it for like five minutes. So here's what I think about it. He just didn't use the name or anything. You're right. But um, apparently we made this video because we wanted to jump on the anti- Dark Side Phil bandwagon that's been happening. That's in vogue, apparently. Some new kings of hater in town, Philly boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Watch out. And my favorite thing is he's like, and the best thing is to not respond, because you know what? The fact that I'm not talking about it, it's irking them. They, they're they so annoyed <laughs> by it. But he was talking about it. Well, that's the best part. <laughs> like, even if I gave a shit. <laughs> it's like, well, I guess I'm not irked now. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> and everybody in his chat is like, oh, the Red Supre video? Did you see it? You know what the most ironic thing about that is, too? No. As far as insults go, it's a fairly milk toast insult. It, yeah, it's pretty tame. Honestly, yeah. Like, the PewDiePie thing is like, eh, you're kind of creepy, you know, in addition yeah. to all the other stuff. The Dark Side Phil thing is like, you're kind of incompetent, and it's pretty funny. Yeah, and Im- or ima- yeah, imagine it applies to Not even to kind of incompetent, things. but, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know what? Honestly, if if done a little different, if you tweaked a little things, a couple things about it, it could even be like a roast thing. If you want, I mean, I certainly don't mean it that way. But you know, if you <laughs> wanted to, right? That's sure. how milk toast it is. You could cross the line and have it be, uh, you know, like an ironic, funny thing or whatever, you know. But he's so stubborn and so pr- prideful. Not really proud. I don't think that can be. You know, he has so much pride. That it's an insult to him, and fuck these guys, they're just like everybody else. And, and of course he goes, if I, I had my lawyer on the phone, he says, if I wanted to, I could His take lawyer. The, yeah. No. <laughs> if anything, you have lawyers at Machinima that'll help you out. The you king do. of hate's paralegal. <laughs> Let's get my army of lawyers in, and then there's a bunch of stuffed animals behind him in suits. <laughs> uh, but, I, so... One thing like people have brought up is, um, is there something wrong with him? I was gonna present that question. Yeah, I I'm gonna say no. Uh, you don't think so? I don't think. Didn't he film himself taking a shower once? Yeah, he and what... thought that was a fine idea. He does. He I think has more of a refusal to grow up than anything else. Like I don't think he suffers from some specific psychological problem that makes him do this per se. You know. 
I mean, he whatever issues he has are the same, I think, as anyone else has. It's just that he chooses to just not acknowledge them or, like, just say, like, I'm the greatest. Like, nothing can, you know... I'll, I'll give you an example on that same Ask the King thing. Now, keep in mind, he vets the questions, right? Yeah. So one of the questions people said was, what do you think of the government shutdown? Which I... <laughs> I, I would skip... If I, me, I mean, I, uh, if that came in as a Retsu Talk topic, I don't think I have that much insight that people could glean. All right, so I've read this New York Times opinion piece. Let's see what Dark Side Phil has to say. Yeah, like what, like, oh, you want to read the news but filtered through slow beef on politics? <laughs> probably not. And there's probably not a lot of people in the video game circuit that have some <laughs> perspective that you haven't heard before, you know? Nobody's like, holy shit, I gotta find out what the fuck Northern Lion thinks about the government shutdown, you know? Is the government shutdown going to impact your video upload rate? <laughs> but, and then the crazy thing is he was getting shit wrong about it. He's like, Oh, that's shocking. Yeah, he's like, I wish the House of Representatives would just let a bill pass. That would do, and it's like, the Senate's not letting it pass. The House of Representatives making the bill, you know? Right. But it's like... If you had such little knowledge, why would you take that question? <laughs> and and then he goes like, um, somebody brought up bullying. Of course, he and he of course says like we're cyber bullies, which no, uh, no. but um, I mean, it's. And then he, you know, it's it's like all this terrible advice he gives that, you know, and, that, and that's how people he got asking for relationship advice. Um, or life advice? Oh, people asked him about, like, women in gaming and things like Dark that. Darkside Phil is now a Dear Abby thing? Right. Oh. Yeah, he just he just talks about whatever, but the problem is that he, he has this notion he can't see. Like, he has no, like, humility enough to go, like, maybe I don't know about that topic. It's just a complete lack of self-awareness. That's exactly it. About yeah. his own limitations. That's exactly it, right? He doesn't yeah. want to believe, like, maybe I'm not so good at Street Fighter Four. So if everyone's beating me, if people beat me at it, it's their fault or it's the game's fault or something. Something's going wrong. I guess he figures he has this platform that is um, adequately self-sustaining that he feels limitless. He's like Bradley Cooper in that movie. But I think he thinks, too, like he thinks that this all started with him in 2008, this whole Let's Play thing. Because he mentions that, too, in the Ask the Kid. Oh, he thinks that, too. Yeah. And it's like, you know, if you want to just look, there are videos from 2007 in 2006 and they were like well they weren't my videos right that's exactly it and <laughs> you know i know he didn't come up with the name let's play you know that came from somewhere else you know something awful so but he's convinced himself of that so to him like all these other people are now surpassing him and his views are starting to go down so now he's pissed off about it so therefore anybody that hates on him is a bully suddenly and and you know what's funny too is he he goes he he wants to attack PewDiePie and Toby Games, but he oh. won't bite the bullet because he knows that'll get that people won't like that. So because he was like, well, why would that stop him? Well, because he that's a, but that's a silly thing about him when he's talking about it. He does do it, but then he just says he doesn't. Like what I mean is he he was like, oh you know you, if all you watch is PewDiePie and Toby Turner, then that's all you're gonna get. I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with watching them, but if you keep watching them, that's all Let's Play is going to be. It's like, dude, just fucking shit or get off the pot. Like, well, that's just, just padding. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Or there's another incredible contradiction he has, which is just mind-numbing, where he's talking about, um, oh, uh, somebody said to him, why don't you use better editing software? <laughs> and he's like, well, here's the deal. He goes, first of all, I don't care about views. But I tried to use this editing software. Honestly, with the amount I upload, I didn't have time to do all that because then if I don't upload as much, I won't get as many views. So you don't care about the views, but you want to make sure you have the views. I wish there was like a way in the chat you could hit a buzzer and be like, you just <laughs> sent the opposite. Because that comes up. <laughs> he has a new channel, or a relatively new channel called DSP Classics, where he just re-uploads his old videos. <laughs> Your favorite Dark Side Phil videos from 2008, 2009 here on DSP Classics. And then people brought up other shit too. Like, he he got kicked off of Blip TV for saying that you should kill all the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> what? Stop, something like that, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I want to. Well, to be, be fair, someone did submit Dark Side Phil, should we kill all the Jews? <laughs> I mean, he, he, he asked the king. 
Apparently, though, he tries to do racial humor because I, I'm. I that's don't... that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just. You saying should put because... that joke on DSP Classics. To be fair to him, I don't think he's like a neo-Nazi actually purporting that. I think he just sucks at telling I think jokes. He's just not very funny. Yeah, and he's touching on subjects where it's like, why don't you leave that to the experts? You know, <laughs> but I mean. It's funny because I was um, uh, I was even wondering the other day, like, if you were Phil, how the hell would you fix your own PR stuff? And I'm like, I don't know if you, I, I think you'd have to have this whole 180 degree turn and just be like, I am so sorry for the past four years. Yeah. Um, He'd have to have some kind of mass subscriber exodus or something for him to change anything. I think, though, if you look at his stats, like he's. Not like for the number of subscribers he has and the number of channels and videos he has, by the way, over 27,000 videos. Yeah, I mean, his upload rate is what, like at least 10 to 20 a day. Yeah, and that's another thing he had brought up to you is like, you know, people complained I was uploading too much and I couldn't watch everything in a day, so then they'd be lost on the next day. He goes, Then I, I lowered my upload rate and people complained about that too. He goes, So I don't know what the fuck. And it's like, dude, you've been doing this like four or five years, you know, I mean. You haven't figured it out yet? Like, people, you, you can't just take every individual comment as, like, a th- you know it's what gospel, I mean? yeah. Yeah, because, of course, there's always someone who's going to be like, I think you need more anime nudity on your channel. That'd help. You know, no, you, you, you want to, that, you know, you disregard that. Just try one. to look for consensus and then see what works best for you, and then, yeah. you, bam. Bam. I mean, it's, it's not complicated. Right. That's the thing, though, right? And... and Again, it kind of feeds into the whole, I don't think he has any sort of humility about it because he's just sort of like, I don't know what to do then. I don't know what these people want. They're crazy, you know? Or a a big crazy one too he does. This is a common thing with him is he insults people with the whole you don't have a life thing. Like, um, (laughs) I included a clip of it at the end of the day in the life where he's like, you're just fucking eating Cheetos at your desk or whatever. And it's like, you uploaded 27,000 YouTube videos. 10 to 20 a day. You're not like me when I roll out of my futon, turn to the TV and play <laughs> GTA 5 for 14 hours and then upload it all. <laughs> also, he had another thing with GTA, roll back over again. GTA 5, which is kind of funny that um, he had a mission as, um, is it Trevor? I think. Yeah, that's his name. Yeah. Uh, where at the beginning, you, have, you the mission starts, you're in a gun shop. And your buddy's like, yo, you got to buy a shotgun with a flashlight attachment. It's kind of show off the customizable guns in the game. Mm -hmm. So he ignores that. He ends up spending all his money on, like, handguns and shit. And then it goes, mission failed because he ran out of money to buy that. He goes, and of course he's like, what? Oh, I was supposed to buy a shotgun with a flashlight? Like, yes! They they just told you! I mean, is he doing that on purpose to give him material, for lack of a better word? I mean, that is kind of his thing in all games, right? Is saying, blaming the game on something. When I mean, it's so evident, though. But the, the, the reason, like, I, I, I think it's not so much is just because he brings that to other things then. So if it's an yeah, act. That's true. And not only that, but with the amount he uploads, that's a tricky act to keep up. Like, not 24-7, but for the variety of it, you know? Like, how do you just keep in that, like, pre- this quote-unquote pretend ignorance for so long? Before it becomes reality. <laughs> yeah. What is that Thoreau quote? Like, one may not wear a mask to himself and another to the multitude. That's exactly how I, I, I describe Darkseid Phil is in terms of Thoreau quotes. <laughs> well, he was thinking of Darkseid Phil when he said that. <laughs> I think it was direct, right? Yeah, he saw one of his videos. And- <laughs> Getting, uh, getting to the video itself, too. Um, oh, yes. Uh, you know, of course, there's people to thank and stuff. Um, you did not submit one. I meant to, but then... Well, I saw the beta you had sent. And yeah. I really liked everything that was in there. Mm. I was having trouble coming up with something. The, the only thing I could think of was, like I told you, just like put, not trying to put on pants like a shirt. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, Shoot. opposite, or shoes on hands. It, it, I just didn't think it would come out as good and I couldn't think of anything else. Well, I, I do want to say one thing is that I had to cut a lot of good stuff this time around. Um, PewDiePie yeah, it's the kind super. of video that you have to keep pretty short. That's before it. Before it wears out its, uh, before, before the point becomes obvious. And, right. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, this, this video runs 7 minutes 54 seconds and I actually had a version that was one minute longer that I showed you and my wife and both of you were like, goes on a little too long. Yeah. 
it's only one minute longer. But even then, and then after that, I watch back. I'm like, yeah, now I can see this one can go and this one can go. And then it's a tighter package, I feel like, mm -hmm. with the eight minutes. Even then, there's, like, stuff I look at. Um, but it starts out, and I'm so arrogant, I put two of mine in. But I really like the iPad thing. And um, <laughs> Duvin with the, uh, does the car remote, which I like, too. He's like, he's like what the fuck? <laughs> Arr! You know. Cut off just at the right time. <laughs> My favorite was Seb Mall with the NES. Uh <laughs> Because he went the extra mile, I think, and actually, like, watched some Dark Side Phil. Because the one thing I had forgotten about is Phil has this signature laugh like this, ah! kind of thing that he, you know. So, Seb Mall totally nails all that. Gizmo KSX comes in with a, a short but sweet with the noodles and the fork. <laughs> 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 one thing, by the way, we got, a, we got a bunch of food stuff. You know, which is why, like, there's there's still, like, three or four food yeah, things. Yeah, I think in, in the, on the original betas, I think one of the things that maybe your wife, too, said is, like, maybe cut out one of the food things. Yeah, there is a lot of food stuff. Goons, what can you do? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, actually, non, non goons, too. But um, the James Lule came in with the pencil sharpener bit. I think that was my favorite one. It's funny, because when I was first watching it, I was like, this is going on a little long, you know? But then the boat at the end yeah, totally exactly. fucked it. was out of nowhere. <laughs> so he totally sold that. Like, the beginning was great, too, with the losing the pencil and all that. But as he was yeah. doing this sharpener stuff, I was starting to think, yeah, I get the joke. And then, bang. And that's, I mean, that's the tricky thing. Like, some of them, like, you, you're like, okay, I get the joke. But then something came in at some point, which just kind of sells you on it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I did an experimental thing with Cabo 245, which is the Cheerios. Kava, well, Kavo again, uh, did, did some homework and did the whole, like, cause now Phil, that's a complaint people have is that now people in the stream are helping Phil play the games and dark side Phil fans were like, I liked watching Phil get really frustrated with the game, but eventually figuring it out and seeing how long it is. Now people just tell him the answer. So it's not as fun, you know? Yeah. It was so fun originally. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. But, um, so, anyway, so Kava does the joke where, like, you know, XX Elite Sniper, XX whatever, get, you know, exploit in the top of the box. But here's the thing. There is actually more to it where he pours out the box. But, you know, when you open a cereal box, there's still the plastic bag you have to open. So it's to get a little more where it still doesn't work, you know, and he complains about it. Well, um, I transcoded that the first time, and it cut where it cuts in the video we have now. So I was like, oh, and I transcoded it again. But then I, I, I just kind of wanted to do the leave it up to the imagination or sometimes, or try for something you notice your second time around mm -hmm. on the video. So that's where, like, if you look, he's pouring it out and he's still going to have the problem with right. the plastic bag. But I don't know. That ended up, uh, who knows how that went. That weird experiment. I think it was the right thing to do. It was the right call. All right. Pineapple pigeon was, was the stove and the meat in the plastic bag. I like that one a lot. Yeah, me too. Just because like, he just hunks it all on there. <laughs> I like it too because he has feels like, Wow. <laughs> wow it's like they forgot how to make a stove you know that was really good um what else do we have here oh uh, yeah so then uh Mizell had the car keys in the when he was trying to actually turn the ignition mm, the panera card yeah that was that was a longer one because he actually gets in his car and does all that stuff so i just cut it to the part with the keys but i thought the panera bread at the end you know sold it Low tax submitted the whole like uh the keyboard he's like what the fuck dude you know and that was actually one of the first submissions we got but I, that was short and sweet. Um, psychedelic Eyeball, one of the fan favorites. Oh, yeah. The yeah. floppy ears. Mm hmm I think people point out now he draws his exclamation points upside down, but, you know, whatever. Well, we can't, we're not all perfect. You know, hey, Goomba Police with the beer. This bottle is bugged. Again, another less is more one. Um, he wanted me to promote his YouTube channel. XXX, X, there's three X's. Oh, it's dirty. Big Mock 93 XXX. Uh, had the guitar again, part of a longer bit, but I think cutting it down to um, it doesn't sound like Strutter or anything yeah. by Kiss. Totally worked it. We had a few guitar submissions too. Oh really? You know, yeah. But I think I think that one worked the best. There was one other that was like uh, had to do with like a, a band, which was kind of ridiculous. Um, <laughs> Golden Valorian X. You saw the whole clip of the light switch. I was ready to just go next on that one. And then at the end, he flashes like it's like a strike. strike. That totally made me laugh. So I'm like, fuck it, that's in. And then we end on Coven Cousin Kevin from Something Awful, who uh, who does the syllabus. And the uh, weird game thing. Yeah, the end. Just going to play video games for a living. I think it's called like Gun Gal or some shit. Some people posted it in the YouTube comments. I don't know. Mm. But, um, and it was, yeah, it was totally, uh, <laughs> 
So the reason this was ended up being an audience thing is because I asked you and Chip Cheesem to submit stuff because I figured it was a short enough joke just the three of us doing things could be whatever. But uh, you know, everybody took a while getting back to me, so I'm like, why don't we make it like a like a, a collaborative kind of thing? Yeah, you know? it was about a year ago that we did the adults react. Yeah, crowdsourcing experiment. So absolutely, now, timing seemed appropriate. Absolutely, and now day in the life. So congratulations, Dark Side Phil. You're up there with PewDiePie. <laughs> it's it's. I'm telling you because I think everyone goes through phases with Dark Side Phil, where you're like, "What the fuck is this?" And then you start to feel bad for the guy, and then you watch more, and you don't feel bad anymore. Yeah, he's, I mean, uh, he's no antihero. No, uh, I I I just think if he had more self awareness, and he gets. He, you know, that would kind of help. Like, if, if, if he actually thought as to why he needs a DS positive thing, as opposed to just, I need yeah. one, you know? Because, I mean, everybody, like, makes a bad PR move. We're, none of us have, like, publicists or anything doing this whole Let's Play thing. Well, he thinks it ain't broke, so why fix it? I guess so, but, except it clearly is broke. It is, but... Or perhaps it is he who is broke. I mean, he had 27,000 videos. If he had not released 10 a day, that means, God, I didn't want to do the math. You could put so many in advance with YouTube scheduler, you could just be done, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. But, like, yeah, people in the fighting game tournament, he calls them bullies, too, but he's a total douchebag. Of course. And you know what's amazing, too, by the way, I forgot to mention, Justin Wong was, like, as far as I could tell from the video I'd seen, like, super nice about it and really didn't even want to talk about Dark Side Phil directly, you know? Kind of yeah. wanted to take the higher road. Phil just shits all over him when he gets the chance. <laughs> and he's only, I could I could have been Justin Wong. I could have done, it's like, oh my God, man. Do you think he has any real friends? I know he has a girlfriend. Yeah, and he, he and, has, there's a guy he, named, sorry, God. Does he have other real connections? He, um, he does, he, uh. Because you would supposedly be more self-aware if you socialize to some degree of regularity, I think. He, he I mean, he does have, like, friends or whatever. Uh, he, I know he has some on the internet, and I know, he talked about a couple in real life, but um, I think the kind of people who are friendly with him ha have kind of learned to tolerate or accept the sort of like, unless it is a gimmick, you know, but again, I don't know how you do it that long, that the whole like, I'm always right, uh, everything is going to funnel, all all things in life are going to funnel through my fi filter and then become fact kind of deal, you know? <laughs> right. Right. So, you know, I, 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 it's the only way, because, yeah, you would think there have been points where people, people have told him, like, dude, you are coming off like a total douchebag here, you know? It's not like a funny thing anymore where you're yelling and you're the king of hate. Now people think you're an actual dickhead in real life. But if you're that kind of really stubborn person, you just tune it out, you know? I mean, seriously, though, your fans get, you know, make you a computer. Yeah, you paid for it, but, like... You don't just like shit on them like out in public like that. They're your fans. Cause that you're just telling all your other fans, hey, don't do shit for me, cause I'll never support you. You know what I mean? Everybody who submitted a video for our Retsu Prey, garbage. They're terrible, all of them. Lemons. I, I hate Ugh. them. Idiots. Fools. We paid three thousand dollars for that. I paid ten thousand dollars for every second of footage. And this is the thanks I get? Ridiculous. Come on. I don't care about views, but this video only had 51,000 views at the time of recording this. This is bullshit, dude. You think you fans think you're pulling your weight? I I don't see, I, I only see 4,000 likes. Do you know that my cock will grow an inch for every 10,000 like I get on a video? It's true. I looked it up. I'm dark side beef. King of hate. King of, king, the king of hate. <laughs> Ask the king. <laughs> God almighty. I mean, that kind of just sums it up all right there, <laughs> yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. Ask the king. I mean, that's that's who he thinks he is. It's, yeah, it's the thing. It's like, and some people pull that off, like Howard Stern with the king of all media thing. But you can tell, like, there there's a division between what's the act and what it's like in real life. I think and he's got some legit muscle behind that, too. Yeah, actually, yes, you're yeah. right. <laughs> that's a pretty important component. How do you call yourself the king of hate and then when people make fun of you, like, those bullies... <laughs> How dare... People kill themselves over this. Like, that's the king of hate? Amazing to me. <laughs> Fucking amazing. Well, you, you think his stock is going to crash ever? I think it is. I think, or do you think I, he's just going to coast on that mediocrity train? 
I think, honestly, part of the reason for DS positive and some of the stuff he's doing is I think he's starting to get a little nervous. Because if you look at his stats, they're not great. Yeah. Anymore. You know, they're not what they used to be. Sure. Uh, and I, I honestly, like, just open and honest, I think if, if he stopped being such a douchebag, it'd probably, like, settle down, you know? Being likable can go a long way, I think. Yeah. Or that's the thing, too, when he's like, I could learn this editing software, but then I couldn't upload. You know, take a couple of days off. You know, like, that's not going to hurt you. Maybe just challenge yourself. Yeah, keep trying shit, you know? Yeah. I don't like Adobe Premiere. I'm fucking learning it, you know? Uh, I don't get it at all. I'm so used to Camtasia, but... but um, <laughs> Or, like, the, all the audio shit. That is a fucking struggle. I mean, but you get better and better at it. Or you find a and website that doesn't work. You learn a thing along the way. You do. That's the whole thing, right? Because now, you know, yes. that's now too, I listen back to the old Retsu Prey videos, and some of them are horrible. Yeah. Audio. Even tried to remaster a couple of them with what you know it was just the original recordings were so bad. I know, yeah, they're terrible. I was, I was maybe we should re record them in so far as like we find the original video and just <laughs> rescript all our jokes. Yeah, get a but... transcript and just read off of it. Mm hmm. Well, you, you studied acting, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Well, there you go. Boom. I think I could I could make a robot that'll talk for me. Whatever. Just a few filters and Absolutely. audacity or whatever you're using. By the way, if anybody wants to make me a computer for free, yeah, I will totally shit on it. <laughs> it's gonna be the wor- I will Live. throw it out of I'll throw it out a window just to show your hard work <laughs> going to waste. <laughs> oh God. Oh, say lovey. Yeah. It's funny, too, because now that I'm, I, I, I thought of, like, a ten more things I forgot to mention about Phil, but I think that's a good point, you know? I mean, yeah. really. He's, yeah. It is what it is. That's why he's the king. Of hate. King is dead. Long live the king. Long live the king.